Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Martha Scott in Ann Barley's Patrick Calls Me Mother on the Hallmark Playhouse. Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our dramatization of a story called Patrick Calls Me Mother by Anne Barley. This is a story well-timed for the close of the old year and the beginning of the new, a story which expresses something of that eternal and even unreasonable hope we always have when the curtain rises on the future. For indeed, the actors of our own future are now children. And this story tonight is about a child, a child rescued from the past and offered the chance of a new life. Starring as the mother tonight, we have that warm and sensitive actress, Martha Scott. And now a word about Hallmark Cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of Patrick Calls Me Mother. For every occasion important to your friends and loved ones, there are Hallmark Cards to carry your thoughts, help bring you closer to those you care for, across the miles, across the years, often merely across the way. On birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, or times when just the right word means so much, a Hallmark card says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. And that identifying hallmark on the back, well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Ann Barley's Patrick Calls Me Mother, starring Martha Scott. Just what happens at midnight each December 31st? Nothing except in our own minds. Time like an ever-rolling stream flows on. It is we who measure it, who feel the drama of its passage at a special signal once a year. Tonight's story begins at such a moment early on a New Year's Eve. Anne Barley, the author of our story, and also one of its characters, is trying to put her husky five-year-old to bed. Now, Pat, it's way past your sleepy time. In you go. All right, Mother. <laughs> Did you have a happy birthday? Oh, sure. Just like Christmas all over again. Mm. I'll Christmas you if you don't get under those covers, young man. <laughs> okay. That's the way. Mother. Yes, Patrick? What's a birthday? Is it because I was born on this day? <laughs> well, I don't know when you were born. Not exactly. You see, Mother went through the greatest adventure of her life trying to find you. Was I hiding? I'll say you were. I don't remember. I do. I remember that New Year's party right here in Washington. Everybody was celebrating the end of Mr. Hitler and Mr. Tojo, but, but for me, it seemed like the end of the world. <laughs> I'm going home. And you can't leave now. Why, it's just midnight. Happy 1936. Oh, Mother, don't you understand? I can't put on a silly hat and blow a noisemaker and pretend that the world is all peaches and cream. I, I Oh, I know, darling. Everything stopped for you, didn't it, when Ted didn't come home from the war. But there's a whole new, fresh year ahead, like a new life. A new life. Happy New Year, Mrs. Barley. Oh, the same to you, Dr. Lowis. Uh, Have you met my daughter, Anne? Yes, I believe we met uh, Dr. Lowis before the war in Amsterdam, wasn't uh, it? Those were the days, empty, but now food is very scarce in Holland. Mm. That's what brings me to your beautiful United States, to find some milk for our children. Are the children... Well, are they having a hard time? Bombs are not rich in vitamins. And the little ones with no parents, no families. Are there many orphans in Holland? Oh, thousands, my dear. The children who forgot to die with their mothers and fathers. 
These are the ones who trouble us. Yes, I see. Uh, some more ice cream, Dr. Lowry? If there are Dutch children who need mothers, perhaps I do. Anne, you uh, wish to take one of my little countrymen and bring him to America? Yes, could it be arranged, Doctor? A, a guardianship? Well, Anne is thinking of it as a generous gesture. It's no gesture, Mother. Would you help me, Dr. Lowis? You understand you cannot pick out an orphan the way you might order a wheelbarrow from a mail or to catalog. <sighs> you, you would have to come to Europe in person to make all the necessary arrangements. Yes. Well, of course, that's out of the question. No, it's not. I, I'll go to Europe. Well, it is not easy this winter. Everything is in turmoil. One cannot travel unless it is official business. But I can get credentials as a foreign correspondent. I used to write for the editor, editor of a paper in Chicago. He'll get me in. Well... If you do, when you arrive in Holland, uh, contact me through UNRWA at The Hague, and I shall help you find an orphan. You know, Pat, I like to think that while I was talking with Dr. Lawis on that New Year's Eve, Somewhere in far off Europe, you were being born. Is that why New Year's is my birthday? That's right, Patrick. But oh, what a hard time we had finding each other. I set out for Europe by troop transport, which crawled and rolled and pitched its way across the wintry Atlantic. I had to go to Paris first, and from there I had to ask help from the American Embassy. You, uh, you're requesting a visa to go to Holland, huh? Yes. Oh, well, let's see. Ann Barley on writing assignment for the Chicago Press. That's right. Why do you want to go to Holland when your newspaper assigns you to Paris? Well, I thought it'd be nice to do a story for my paper from Holland. You know. The newspaper you work for, Miss Barley, does it come out in the morning or the afternoon? Uh, uh morning or afternoon? Yes. <laughs> well, you're going to think this is awfully peculiar, but... I honestly don't know. Uh, uh, can it be, Miss Barley, that you're sailing under false colors? Oh, please, you, you can't just put me in a packing box and ship me back to the United States. Miss Barley, we can't authorize travel unless it's for important business. Well, my business is important. Maybe you won't think it is. Maybe I will. Oh, it's so hard to explain. I... Would you like to tell me about it? At dinner? Well, yes, I, I think that would be easier. <laughs> That's why I had to come to Europe, Mr. Arthur. Jim, huh? All right, Jim. Maybe it isn't official business according to the rule books, but children are the future. Mm -hmm. And if I can bring hope and warmth and love into one neglected life, then there'll be some purpose in my own living. But why do you have to go to Holland? You should be able to find a child here in France. Well, I'll certainly try. Now, look, why don't you trot over to the office of the French Assistance Publique? It's right near the Etoile. Uh -huh. It's the official agency which cares for orphans. Well, thank you, Jim. I'll go see them right away. that the assistance publique can help you, mademoiselle. Oh, but why not? I'm prepared to give a child a good home and love and all the opportunities of life in America. But if we give you a child and you take him to your country, can you imagine the disappointment of the real mother if she should return? Oh. Or the father coming back from German prison. See. Also, we are thinking of you, mademoiselle Barley. You want a child who is healthy, who would be a joy and a comfort to you, n'est-ce pas? Of course, but so many of our babies. <sighs> Come, you see for yourself. In this room are the babies not yet one year old. Oh, the poor darlings. What a mistake they have made, these little ones. To come into this world the first year after the Great War. Oh, and this little wasted body, what's wrong with her? Oh, that is Colette. The father was killed in Germany. The mother was exhausted by grief. She bore little Colette and died. Oh, she looked starved and so thin. The first month of her life, the child had no milk. 
She was fed mostly on coffee. How dreadful. So many of our orphans are like Colette. Poor little one. Little hungry baby with the shining eyes. Can you hold onto my finger, Colette? Reach out. There. A month without food and still you can hang on to life. What are you trying to do, Anne? Make a martyr out of yourself? Oh, I tell you, Jim, I, I see that baby's face in my sleep. That little undefeatable scrap of life with such magnificent eyes. Yes, but with a start like that, what chance does a child have? If Colette could live as long as this, she'll get well. You, you should have felt her little claw tugging at my finger. Use your head, Anne. Don't take a child because you pity her. I don't pity her. I admire Make her. Make your trip to Holland. Stick to your plan. Give yourself an even break. Don't take a child to America to die. <laughs> Barley, I'm glad to see you. It's good to see you, Dr. Lowers. I have asked one of our best social workers in the Netherlands to find a child for you. And he is waiting outside. The, the, the social worker? The child. Your orphan. Shall I have him come in? No. Uh, well, I'm not sure. What... Yes, I suppose you may as well. How can you explain the feeling of waiting in a cold, bare room? Waiting to meet the child who may grow to call you mother. I, I can't imagine the childbirth is one-tenth as strange. For a newborn baby is part of the life it joins, but, but to become a mother by the opening of a door. Come in, Paul. Paul, come in. Miss Barley, this is Paul. Paul, come with Frau Barley. I saw before me a tow-headed little boy with a sharp chin and nose and a knobby forehead. His face had that red and bleary look that comes from too much cold and too little food. How, <clears throat> How are you, Paul? He speaks no English, of course. Poor little lost boy. Won't you come to me? <laughs> he is very shy. Can't you smile for the lit? Oh. No, it's frolic sign, Paul. Yeah? Paul. Oh, don't frighten him. The boy stared at me with dazed, unseeing eyes as if I were a stone. Anyone who's ever gone through the ordeal of adoption knows that the parent doesn't select the child. It's the child who chooses the parent. And though I long for him to give the tiniest sign to come to me, let me take his hand, Paul would not choose me. Dr. Lowers sent him outside and softly closed the door. Well, what do you think? Oh, Dr. Lowers, am I... Am I cruel, selfish? I, I know that poor little boy needs someone, but... If the hearts do not touch, there could be no happiness. Paul will find a mother. Oh, I feel so wicked. I, I want to love him, but, but I can't. God makes our feelings. When we love or lack love. We must not blame ourselves. There's a little baby, a girl in a, in a Paris orphanage. Her name is Colette, and her eyes... Her eyes are full of love for you? Yes. What better language can children speak? There is your child. Madame Bondé? Oui? I was here a few days ago, and you showed me a little girl, Colette... The, the little hungry one with the blue-gray eyes. I beg you, Madame Bondé, let me have her. Oh, I am so sorry. She's long. gone. You, you haven't given her to someone else, have you? Poor little Colette. She is dead. Oh, no. No. Oh, I am a petite. And thank God that you have not forgotten how. Oh, that sad little bundle. I loved her. Then what greater gift could she have? <laughs> be of good cheer, Mademoiselle Barley. Be, be patient and depend on me. 
I will find you a child to call you Mama. We'll return to the second act of Patrick Calls Me Mother, starring Martha Scott. Uh, since you can't reach in your radio and grab me, I guess I'm safe in reminding you it's about time to make your New Year's resolutions. If you're anything like me, you'll probably resolve to be more thoughtful about remembering anniversaries, birthdays, and such. If so, you'll be interested in knowing there's a little present waiting for you. It's a gift from the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards. It's the Hallmark date book. Here's a handy book to help you remember. In it, you'll find every day of 1951 arranged in calendar form with plenty of space for writing in the names of the people you want to remember on that date. There's room for addresses, too, as well as lots of space for your Christmas card list, which you'll probably want to start now while you still have this year's cards. The Hallmark date book also has other information you'll find useful during the year. The appropriate gift for each wedding anniversary, the traditional birthstone and flower for each month. Surely you'll find it a big help in being more thoughtful every day of the year. So tomorrow, when you stop in to get your New Year's cards, ask for the 1951 Hallmark Date Book. Your store will gladly give you one as a friendly gesture to convey his Happy New Year wish for you. Now back to James Hilton and the second act of Patrick Calls Me Mother, starring Martha Scott. <laughs> side of her son's bed, Anne Barley recalls her adventures in Europe five years before. Adventures full of heartbreak and disappointment. Even at best, adopting a child can be a terrifying process, but to a single woman alone in France during that first frigid winter after the liberation, it was almost too much to bear. You see, Pat, I knew that Europe was full of homeless waifs who needed love, yet, yet I couldn't find my baby. Then Jim brought me the wonderful news. Madame Bondet had found a child for me. Jim and I hurried to the nursery, and as Madame Bondet let us in, I said to myself, I, I can't stand another disappointment. If God meant me to have a baby from the battle scars of Europe, this will have to be my child. Regardez le bébé. What I saw lying there in a little crib turned my whole topsy-turvy life right side up again. There was a real charmer, only a few months old, who, who rolled toward me in the crib and gave me what seemed to be a planned welcome. A flash of deep blue eyes and a smile that seemed to say, well, high time, I've been waiting here for you all my life. <laughs> you are pleased, yes. Uh, what do you think, Jim? Yeah, well, it's a baby. Baby's go, I guess she's fine. Uh, Jim, forgive me, but she is a he. Yeah, oh, it's a boy. Uh, we miss you. <laughs> oh, well, then get him out of that pink shirt. What do you want to do, warp his entire personality? Oh, oh Jim. Uh, how about his health? Is he strong? Uh, none of our little ones have strength to spare. Oh. And little Germain has an internal weakness, but a good doctor. Oh, I'll, I'll take care of him. I'll make him well and strong. Uh, uh, what, what did you call him? Germain. He's christened Germain Michel. Germain Michel? That's exactly the way I feel about your name, kid. What, what are you going to call a man? Well, I've always liked the name of Jonathan. You like Jonathan? Mm -hmm. You want the kid to be a sissy? Oh. Look at those shoulders. He'll probably pitch for the Yankees. No, no. He needs a he needs a nice short name. Huh? Jim Arthur, after all the trouble I've had getting a child, I think you could at least let me pick out the name. Yeah, but he looks kind of Irish, doesn't he? Why not call him Patrick? <laughs> well, how could I take a French baby home to America with a name like Patrick? <laughs> how about it, Pat? You like your name, Pat? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> See, he likes it. Oh, Jim, I'm so happy and, and grateful. Do you realize all you've done? Oh, I'm a pretty swell guy, all right. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm doing all this for a purpose, you know. I expect to have 
has some official status with regard to this baby. Jim, you do? Oh, yeah. I insist on being Patrick's godfather. Oh. Well, I promise nobody will be his godfather but you. for Patrick and me. I had our precious airline reservation, and as the first real spring day warmed the city of Paris, Jim decided we should all have a farewell picnic together. And it was there it happened. What's wrong? I don't know. I just lifted him up. Well, he's in terrible pain. Oh, Jim, do you suppose it's that trouble Madame Bondé warned Let's us about? Let's get him to a doctor. Come on. At the hospital, they said it was serious. Immediate operation. The risk? The doctor frowned and muttered something in French I couldn't understand. Then through that dreary night of waiting, I realized that this tiny new life was more important to me than my own. At last, the nurse came to tell me that the operation was over. My son was resting and would recover. My son. weeks before Patrick was well enough to travel, and by then I'd lost my space on the airliner to New York. Travel's really tight, Annie. Everybody in Europe's trying to get back to the good old USA. Oh, they say it'll be seven months at least before they have any transatlantic space. Jim, I can't wait that long. Well, look, you be ready to leave with Patrick Sunday night. I'll see what I can do. And by some miracle, Jim got us the reservations. But at plane time, there was no familiar face to see us off. I, I can't understand it. Can you, Pat? <laughs> I can't understand why Jim didn't take us to the airport or at least come down to see us off. Can I have some seat belt, please? <laughs> now, don't be afraid, baby. Mother will hold you close. Jim wanted to get rid of us, well, we don't care, do we? We're going home, and when we get there, we'll find ice cream cones and toy giraffes and vitamins and heating pads, and oh, we're lucky, Patrick. We're so lucky we found each other. You know, you have to live for all the children, Pat, for Paul and Holland, for poor little Colette, and for all the thousands who can, can never enjoy the chance you'll have. You've got to have fun for all the kids in Europe who don't even know how it feels not to be hungry. You'll have to rest up for some of that living. Now go to sleep, Pat. Go to sleep. How do you like it? <laughs> New York International Airport. Have your passports and customs manifests ready. Look out of the window, Pat. I, I wonder if there's anybody here to meet. Jim. Jim! Yes, dear, did you call me? Oh, Jim. It's the funniest thing. I, I was thinking back. Five years ago, when, when I flew home with Patrick and you were at the airport to meet us, I was so surprised. Well, you should have known the only way I could get you on that plane was to say you were coming to the U.S. to marry me. But you didn't tell me you were being transferred to Washington. Yeah, well, I'm a diplomat, and diplomats are full of surprises. You were so put out because you weren't there to see us off. Anne, darling, has it really been five years? Look at your son. There's the proof. Yeah. Patrick was asking me, how it happened that his birthday comes on New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. I was reminiscing, and 
I guess he just went to sleep. Didn't even say his prayers. Maybe you should say them for him, huh? All right. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for your many blessings. Bless my husband who helped me to find my son. And bless our son who helped me to find my wife. Help us to do thy work in the year ahead so that the world we make for our son and for all the world's children will be rich and fair and full. Grant us a child's enthusiasm so that we won't grow weary with our task. Let our family and all families be strong in faith that, that 1951 may be the year of light instead of darkness. Grant us peace and the wisdom to make the most of peace. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year, Anne. Happy New Year, Jim, darling. return in a moment. Every year that passes leaves behind a bit of sadness, a bit of sweetness. Fortunately for us, we have a scale that balances the two. The scale called friendship lightens the sadness and allows the sweet memories to linger long in our minds. Surely friendship is worth some effort. The Hallmark date book I told you about a few moments ago is not very big, that's true, but it's a great big help to friendship. With it to remind you of the dates you want to remember, the friends you want to think of through the year, you'll find your friendships growing and growing through every passing year. So ask for your free Hallmark date book for 1951. It's a gift for you from the fine store where you buy Hallmark cards to thank you for your friendship and patronage and to wish you every happiness in the new year. Here again is James Hilton. It's always good to see old friends this time of the year, and Martha Scott, both as an old friend of the Hallmark Playhouse and also for your very fine performance in the role of Anne. It was particularly good to see you tonight. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. Hallmark and I really are old friends. Those grand Hallmark date books have helped to keep me in touch with my friends for many years now, and, of course, I always enjoy seeing you and all the others of the Playhouse cast. Happy New Year to you all. And a Happy New Year to you, Martha. I hope you'll be listening to our first broadcast of the New Year next week. It's an exceptionally fine story, Henry F. Pringle's Theodore Roosevelt, the story of one of the most colorful presidents in American history. And to play the title role, we will have that equally colorful Hollywood star, Broderick Crawford. I surely will be listening, Mr. Hilton. Good night. Good night, Mother Scott. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And our story tonight was dramatized by Lawrence and Lee. And now, for all of us here at the Playhouse, and on behalf of the makers of Hallmark Cards, may I wish you a very, very happy new year. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you carry enough to send the very best. Martha Scott may soon be seen in the Horizon production When I Grow Up. The part of Jim tonight is played by Gerald Moore, Dr. Lois by Ted Osborne, and Madame Vaughn by Mary Lansing. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Chilton returns to present Broderick Crawford in Henry F. Pringle's Theodore Roosevelt and the week following, Edna Ferber's The Farmer in the Dell and the week after that, James Ronald's Old Soldiers Never Die on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KNBC, Kansas City, Missouri.